Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with another Halloween video using one of my oldie but goodie favorite stamp sets that is back in stock, <laughs> the Simon's a Stamp Wildflowers set. I'll have a link to it. So to start off with, I am doing some simple ink blending. I have some oxide inks and I have them in my little ink stand holders. I'm using my Waffle Flower Mini Media Mat which <laughs> I should have cleaned off before using it. I had like dry glue on it and like dust and things. Like I don't show this in all my videos, but it's literally off to the side of where I film 24 seven. Like it's always sitting there. I set my, my glue containers on it and all the things. And anyway, it was dusty and it, you know, had stuff on it. So it wasn't clinging to the paper. As you can see, like I was struggling. <laughs> <laughs> and I, what I should have done was just turned off the camera, went and cleaned it off, come back and I would have been good. But, you know, I, like all the things I tell you guys, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so, anywho, very simple ink blending. I was just looking at all my oxide inks and I was like, hmm, what color should I use? And my eye fell on ripe persimmon, which I don't pull out very often. And yet it's such pretty color. And then I was like, huh. Okay, haven't used that in a while. And then I was like, hmm, haven't used wild honey in a while. What else would look good? And then I was like, ooh, seedless preserves and then chip sapphire. I was like, this will make a fun blend. Why not? So that's what I did. And funny enough, as usual, I know I sound like a broken record, but for people that if you're not, you know, familiar with my videos, these last two colors look like crap on camera, like the blend of them. The colors themselves are fabulous. But my camera, I swear it hates me when it comes to ink blends because it's just like, ha ha. <laughs> Because it looks way worse than it did in real life. But that said, y it's not super important. Like the blend does not need to be perfect. 99% of the time it doesn't need to be perfect. And in all crafting and all things, perfection is overrated. Seriously. But when it comes to like blending and card making, 99% of the time it doesn't need to be perfect. And you can cover it with splatter or bling or a well-placed die cut. You know, it's not a big deal. But this just, it looks... I don't know, especially when I added chip sapphire, it just looks horrible on camera, but in real life it looked fine. So I'm using my little, my blending brushes from Simon. I'm really liking these. I, I normally used to avoid blending brushes, especially with oxide inks. I'd use them with like dye inks, distress inks, everything. But with the oxides, I preferred my foams, but I'm really liking the blending brushes with oxides. It's just quick and easy. And I have, well, a ton of them. So anyway, I did the blend on these cards. Ignore the, the whatever, you know. It, again, doesn't need to be perfect because I'm going to be stamping over this and adding more ink and all the different things. I just, I wanted the color more than anything. So once I was happy with it, regardless of what my camera thinks. Um, oh, and I also had post-it tape on my fingers because again, I didn't want to clean off the media mat. Um, so I was using the post-it tape to keep from getting like big finger smudges, that sort of a thing. And then um, I'm spraying this with water, just adding a bunch of splats of water. I'm not going to get a, a serious lift on this because I'm working on Simon's 120 pound white cardstock, which I really like for ink blending, but it doesn't um, react the same way as like distress watercolor paper or heavy stock or anything like that does when you add water to it. So you don't get quite the same effects if that makes sense. And that also ties into, like I've said to you guys, um, experiment with what you've got, experiment with different card stocks, different surfaces, all the things. Cause you never know. Some card stocks are great for blending. Some are great for other techniques. Some are better for stamping. You know what I mean? So anywho, I made sure these were completely 100% dry. Like I used my heat tool, um, all the things like these need to be dry. Like dry, dry, dry. You don't want embossing powder clinging to this and oxides, you know, can take longer to dry. So these backgrounds are 100% bone dry. And then I pulled up my beautiful wildflowers set. I've done, I think this is my seventh or eighth video. I'll know when I like upload it um, using this set because I just love it. So I've lined up my first background in my Misty and I'm actually going to take a bit of painter's tape and I'm just using the painter's tape again to hold it in place because I know I want to stamp this more than once because there's so much detail and this is like the main focus and the stamp is big. So I was like, I don't want this moving because it's such a big stamp to you that sometimes it will like cling to the background when you stamp, you know, and it pulls it up, which more often than not doesn't matter. 
but with this I wanted it to hold in place. So I inked up the stamp twice with Simon's clear embossing ink. I'm stamping on a bagger and I had heavily used my anti-static powder tool before all this. So now I'm stamping the image with that clear embossing ink and then I'm going to coat this with clear embossing powder. So once I've got this completely coated, I can mount this and then I'm going to re repeat the process with the other stamp in the set and the other background because yeah, I just wanted to make two because why not? And with this set, I can never decide on like, you know, should I use this stamp or this stamp? So I use both. <laughs> so coated this with clear embossing powder. Now with this technique, this, this technique has been around since like the beginning of stamping. I don't know. I've been aware of it for a couple of decades now, something. It was originally called, called the Joseph's coat technique. Um, other people have called it like trapped inking, um, ink emerging. I don't know. There's like different names for it. I, yeah, I'm, it just is whatever floats your boat. So basically what I'm doing though, is I'm trapping that, the, you know, color behind the heat embossing. So you can use any sorts of images. You can use multiple images, all sorts of things. So I do this with both backgrounds. I stamp the wildflower silhouette images and then clear heat emboss. So it looks pretty, but this is where it gets really fun. So I am going to apply black soot oxide ink right on top. I know it looks, and it's going to look like a hot mess. <laughs> I'm also not applying it heavily. You could actually go direct to paper with the ink pad, like just solid coat it that originally was I think the original way it was done is you would like brayer on you know like solid ink but I didn't want that I wanted it to not be perfect and I also because I'm using a blending brush you can still see that kind of wild honey blend through the black soot like that color still there so and I liked that I wanted that kind of dusky smoky sort of a look but again you can do whatever you want and you can use whatever color you want it doesn't have to be black it, it literally doesn't matter, but I wanted the black soot because I'm going for a little Halloween vibe. So I blended that on and again, it's a hot mess. Trust me. I know. <laughs> and then I splattered water on it again, just because it's distressing. They, they react with water regardless of the cardstock. There's still going to be something. And I like the splattery fleckly look. So I'm going to do this to both and it's just, it's going to look just awful, you know, but there's always a method to the madness. So I do this with the second background, blend on that black soot oxide ink. And in some areas, like closer to the actual flowers, I did do it a little bit heavier just so that they will pop a little bit more. And then later towards the top, just so those colors sort of still peek through. Cause yeah, it's, it was a pretty blend and I didn't really want to cover up all that yellow. I really like that wild honey, even though I never reach for it. I don't know what it is. I think it's more just in case I have so many colors and not enough time in the day. But anywho, did the same thing. Just splattered some water with my, just a paintbrush, you know, put water on my craft mat, whatever. And then I couldn't resist, like this could be done here. Like I could rub the ink off the, the embossing and it's good to go. Like you don't have to do anything else. Like that's the technique basically. But I've got these mica spray stains. I've already done a couple videos using them. The Ranger Halloween release, these are limited edition, unless we can convince Ranger to keep making them. I don't know how it's going to work, but they're technically a limited edition. So we'll just stick with that. But I pulled out the, what is the gunmetal? Empty Tomb. It's a gunmetal color, but Empty Tomb. With these mega spray stains, you do need to shake the ever living daylights out of them. You want to make sure all that synthetic mica in the bottom of the bottle is fully dispersed because if you get that into the nozzle, that can cause clogging. I haven't had an issue. Ranger does sell um, new spray little nozzles if you do end up clogging a bottle, but if you shake them up really good. So anyway, I lightly sprayed the empty tomb on the background, not heavy, because again, I didn't want to cover the background. I didn't want to cover that, but I wanted that splatter and the shimmer and the sparkle. And then after I sprayed it, I let it dry. I probably could have let it dry for longer, but I was impatient to see what would happen. <laughs> so I rubbed off all the, um, the spray and the ink sitting on top of the embossing because the clear embossing off of those wildflower images is resisting all the ink spray, everything that's put on top of it. So once you remove that, you see the image, you see all the color. And again, that's the technique and it's just, it's magic and it's fun and it's so easy. Like I said, I've known about this technique for forever. Like I've been stamping and making cards for almost 20 years now. 
And I've been aware of this technique, but I honestly I can't remember unless someone else does and they can point me to a video I've done because I've done over a thousand videos. Um, gosh, maybe even 2000. I forget. It's a lot. <laughs> anyway, anyway, one of those techniques I've known about, but I don't remember if I've actually ever done it. So this is fun. Anywho, I used a flickering candle mica stain again shook it up really good and i just picked some up like took the nozzle right out of the bottle and picked it up with the paintbrush splattered that on the background so i get just a lovely kind of goldy yellow splatter as well let it all completely dry and then i trim down these backgrounds to slightly smaller than what my a2 cards will be so these end up being like four by five and a quarter inches something like that so once i've got these trimmed down um i also trimmed down some black cardstock in my stash that I'm going to mat these onto and I also pulled out some just white a white cardstock scrap and I'm going to stamp a sentiment from the spook up some fun set because like I want to do Halloween these cards could totally be non-Halloween you know could be thinking of you happy birthday no sentiment at all I still struggle with that I've done it a couple times like not put a sentiment on the front of the card they don't have to have a sentiment you know but it's also habit because again 20 years of this it's just it's uh, still kind of feels unfinished i almost didn't put a sentiment on these cards because i was like oh, do i really want to put anything on top of this? <laughs> but i wanted to and i love making halloween cards so i heat embossed the sentiment from the spook up some fun onto the white cardstock i'd stamped it with verse fine claire nocturne ink and then clear heat embossed the sentiments because black embossing powder and me are not friends. You could, if you are good with black embossing powder and it doesn't cause you unbelievable amounts of grief, knock yourself out, seriously. Like, go go hard with it. I just, mm -mm. All it really, all it takes is one accident with black embossing powder knocking over a container into a carpet and you'll never want to use it again. And that was me like 15 years ago. So anyway, <laughs> I heat embossed those sentiments. I trimmed it down with my paper trimmer and then I'm going to blend that same uh, chip sapphire and seedless preserves onto it because I'm going to place this along the bottom of the card fronts and I thought the blend would look kind of pretty. So I just added the uh, oxide inks with those little blending brushes. Again, just working on my little media mat, which I had cleaned, you know, after doing all those backgrounds, I cleaned it off and oh, shocker, my cardstock clings better. <sighs> anyway anyway <laughs> this medium and my big one um i just wash them like in the sink well my big one i actually hold it up and i just wash it in my shower um because it's larger and my sink i just use the sink in our bedroom or like you know the bathroom next to our bedroom which is next to my office um yeah it's silicone throw it in the sink throw it in the shower whatever if you have a big sink do that bit of soap you're good to go so anywho cleaned off the mat it works better so I matted those backgrounds with just some black cardstock just to frame it up a little bit. So I adhered those together with some craft tacky glue. And then the sentiments I popped up with just some thin 3D foam squares to give it just a little bit of dimension. And I'd cut both those sentiments just on an angle with my paper trimmer. So then once they were adhered, the colors all kind of came together. And then another favorite, of mine that I have shown in a bunch of videos and I've shown it in a couple different ways. I've done it with the ink pads directly. I've done it with the ink blending foams. And then I did a recent video where I used the blending brushes and I'm really liking the blending brushes for this. It works. So I'm using the same oxides, same blending brushes, and I'm just applying the ink instead of to paper, I'm applying it to the stamp. So you get a slightly lighter impression than you do when I've, sh the way I've shown with using the ink blending foams, because my ink foams are like saturated with oxide inks. So whatever floats your boat, but this works too. And I just love it. So I get that same gradation on the inside and this could totally be a card front. Um, and speaking of sinks, with these stamps, because they're so big and I had them like full of ink after doing this with the brushes. Same thing, I took them to the sink and just washed them with soap and water and they needed it anyway because these stamps were filthy. <laughs> they, when they get to the point where they're having trouble clinging to the misty or acrylic blocks or anything, wash them with a gentle soap and water and they'll almost always be good to go after that. So I gave these a good cleaning after this because they needed it and it was also faster than trying to like wipe off 
all that you know random ink and stuff off the stamps so stamp those onto the inside of the card so we've got all those beautiful colors and that blend i really like this blend i'm gonna have to use it again so got those done and then i took one more sentiment from the spook up some fun stamp set that says have a wicked good halloween which makes me think of adam sandler what movie was that is it mr deeds is that what it was called i've seen like every single adam sandler movie anyway <laughs> Anyway, stamp the sentiment with the Nocturne ink and then um, fold it over my cards, reinforce the fold with my Teflon bone folder. And then I'm going to adhere the card fronts to the card bases with the craft tacky glue. And this whole time I was like, what am I gonna add for embellishments? Cause you guys know like I'm gonna add embellishments and I was like crystals or pearls or sequins or die cuts. And I was like, ooh, bats would be really cute. And then I was like, wait, every time I use this set I reach for these flickering butterflies wafer die set and I did it again but this time I die cut them from Simon's black glitter cardstock so almost like bats but not really you know so because I've had a lot of people asking like can you do more Halloween cards with non-Halloween supplies so other than the sentiments everything else is very non-Halloween you know you can you can make it work so I and also these butterflies are just favorites these are kind of like one of those little must-haves because I use them on so many cards and this black glitter cardstock's really pretty. It's almost, it's not black black. It's almost got like a purpley undertone to it. I don't know. It's just, again, it's just pretty. I really like it. And it worked so well with these cards. So I adhered the butterflies with little dabs of craft tacky glue. Just picking them up with my little tweezers because some, these the little ones are quite small. But I just put a dab of glue like right in the very center of the body. And that's it so that I can kind of pop up the wings a little bit, you know, give it a little bit of dimension. And then of course, all the remaining butterflies from the die cuts, I'm going to adhere to the inside of the cards just cause, and also because it'll cover up on the inside of the one, I kind of missed the stamping a little bit, which isn't the end of the world, but covered up with a die cut and we're good to go. So those are the cards. I will turn on my flashlight to try and show that it, this is one of those things like it was hard to show and also my lighting was awful because it was a very overcast and yucky day out but in real life again there's like that sparkle and shimmer from those mica sprays on the background and it's just oh. and then the sparkle from the die cuts and yeah and then the technique and the flowers and all the fun stuff so these were so much fun to make and I will like I said, have links below the video to my blog post. I'll have links to all the supplies I used. So you can check that out in the description box below the video. In my blog posts are picture links, so it's easier to see everything. And that's always the first link directly below. And also I paired these cards with some metallic black envelopes just to finish off the shimmer. And I'll link to those as well. So you can check all that out in the description box below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing, thumbs up and commenting, all of it. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!